Nope. Guys, today we're going to be using a variety of methods to deal with larger opponents. Throughout our role with Will today, you'll notice a lot more success than last time with Thomas. Make sure to stay to the end so you can learn some of the best techniques that I personally use to close the gap between me and my favorite 200 pound upper belts. Okay, so as soon as the roll starts, I notice Will is playing with a tight and forward leaning posture. I know completing the pass will be hard due to his elbow and knee connection. I try to bait collar grips by leaning in close to make him reach and then break the connection between his elbow and knee. Unfortunately, I don't react fast enough to break the collar grip and he's able to pull me into his guard. I keep my knees pinched to keep him from getting on the inside position, and then I step my leg deep into the pocket of his knee with my foot pointed outwards, which denies him the use of the daily heba hook. However, now with a collar grip to break my posture, a hip post to control the distance, and an ankle grip to disrupt my balance, he then manages to place his far leg behind my knee and uses a tripod sweep to come up. So I know if Will is able to get on top of me, it's game over. As soon as I'm swept, I'm immediately pushing him away and strumming out from my impending doom. I'm also thinking to keep my feet at the forefront of my guard in order to control the distance and give me an ability to shrimp away if necessary. Another important concept that I'm trying to keep in mind is to deny Will the ability to pin my knee to the ground. If I want to have any chance of success in this role, I need to keep my hips active. Will is then going to try to pressure the outside of my left leg by weaving his arm through the outside of my leg and placing his hand on the bottom right thigh. This will allow him to use his shoulder and apply a lot of pressure on the top leg while also slightly immobilizing the bottom. I recognize this and use a very strong technique to counter. I grab a collar tie and try to hang all my weight on top of Will's head. This pass requires Will to press a large portion of his weight forward. The collar tie allows me to drive his head away from me towards the ground. It definitely doesn't completely shut down the pass, but it buys me a little bit of time. Eventually, he's able to clear the collar ties and begins to stuff my knee between his. If Will is able to remove one of my knees from play, as well as establish a position that negates my ability to move, it's over. I give a big frame with my knee and left arm, and I'm able to recover my right leg. As soon as it's out, I go straight back to the collar tie and put my foot on his hip to prevent him from being able to sit on my knee once again. I can feel another threat is coming as soon as Will's arm swims under my right leg. For a guy his size, the double unders pass is one of the sharpest blades in his arsenal if I don't counter it quick. As he loops his arm under my leg, I place my right arm between them and grab an underhook. I then gable grip and crunch his shoulder into my chest to nullify his ability to move forward on the pass effectively. I believe this move is called the origatami and is one of my strongest moves against larger opponents. As Will abandons the attempt, I lock close guard to return to a neutral position. Now in close guard, Will is strongly pressing forward. He starts to set up a cheeky Ezekiel from guard, one of the few submissions that, while very unlikely, can be executed from inside the guard. Because he's so high in my guard, his base becomes light. I give a half-assed chop to his leg to off-balance him, and then use this off-balance to create space and shrimp away. I feel Will's right arm start to weave between my legs again. However, this time my top leg is sitting really shallow on his shoulder. I use my right leg to kick his left knee and create an off balance, then remove my left leg to expose the outside of his left elbow. I push his elbow towards the center line to keep him from turning into me while also exposing his back. He realizes this and sits to guard to protect his back, but gives up the top position resulting in a sweep. I try a different method of passing to capitalize on Will's forward posture. I step inside of his guard and grab a collar tie to keep him leaning forward. I also punch in an underhook to prevent the single leg. Then I drive my knee to the mat, passing him using the knee cut. As soon as I pass, I go directly to mount. If you notice in mount, I have my feet placed on Will's hips. This is a method that I learned from Gabriel when mounting larger opponents. I make sure to press against his hips and pinch my knees. Will manages to off balance me by rocking forward, giving him space to frame against my armpits. I can feel I'm about to get thrown off, so I poorly attack an armbar, but I just end up getting slid off mount. I go to step in again, but this time Will falls to his back. I then start to work outside passing. I do this by trying to circle around his head and place myself in a position to push his ankles away to drop to north-south. I definitely need to work on closing the distance and getting chest to chest because as I go to drop onto Will, he frames against my shoulder and sits back into open guard. I go for another inside step after two positive exchanges, this time looking for a Kamora roll. Will stays tight and I stay in this position for one second too long. He grabs my lapel and flips me over to reverse the position again. Now Will is in a great position to start pouring an immense amount of pressure on top of me. I know that escaping out from under him at this point is going to be exhilarating. Instead of going for an escape, I grab his collar and wait until I feel a very strong drive forward. 
I grab a collar grip and yank his head down. I then thread my right arm through my left arm with his lapel looped under his neck, and just as I think I have a loop choke finished, he manages to roll through, and time ends here. Alright guys, so that is going to do it for this video. Techniques such as the arm drag, origatami, and countering the arm weave with the collar tie are just a few things that I've picked up and developed over the years to allow me to even the playing field between me and larger opponents. As always, I'm open to any tips or information you have that could help myself or other people in the comments. So if you know of a better way, or if there was a detail that I missed or said wrong, please feel free to correct me in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.